Hello, Fringers, Spacers, my Rebel Alliance. I'm your host and GM, Ian Duncan. And I wanted to speak to you at the top of today's show with some requests for all of you. We at Respect the Crit support the Black Lives Matter movement. The protests against police brutality is a stand against racism in our cities, in our country, and in our world. And when we speak about racism here, it's not just the outward violence against marginalized voices and people of color, but the institutionalization of it in the way we live our very lives, the way it is intertwined into our social and economic practices. And to passively allow these institutions to continue as they do actively enables racism. To do nothing continues to allow people to lose their lives. The status quo has got to go. The protests and demonstrations are not just a reaction to the death of George Floyd at the hands of police officers, but the most recent and most visible to come out of a frustration of ongoing racial violence that has plagued our nation for generations. And it's okay to be mad. We need you to be mad. But don't just be outraged. We need you to listen. As a white person, this isn't really my arena to speak in. I encourage you to seek out marginalized voices, more knowledgeable voices, to listen and to learn how racism actually affects people from the people who have been speaking about it and fighting it their entire lives. Be an ally. Use a strong arm, a helpful arm, to allow these marginalized voices through to be heard. Because silence is violence. What we want to do is advocate for people's lives. And here are a few ways that you can do that. If you can, please attend peaceful protests and demonstrations. Find them in your local area. Continue to practice pandemic precautions. Listen to the organizers and be safe. Now, I know there are a lot of listeners who may not have this as an option. Some of us are vulnerable to coronavirus. Some of us are not in or near big cities where these demonstrations are taking place. Some of us are introverted nerds with anxiety or mental health issues on the best of days. You can still support these demonstrations by donating money to local or out-of-state bond programs, giving relief to protesters arrested in your area or across the country. There are many available, such as the Minnesota Freedom Fund or the People's City Council Freedom Fund in Los Angeles. And there is likely one in your state or city or donate money to more national organizations like the ACLU, the LGBTQ Fund, and the NAACP who continue to fight for the civil liberties of marginalized and black citizens. Links to these can be found in the show notes. Consider donating money to a local chapter of Black Lives Matter. Here in Los Angeles, BLM has been organizing demonstrations and fighting hard to see that taxpayer money and city budgets are going to underfunded social services and health care to uplift our communities rather than be disproportionately allocated to an already bloated police budget. Some of us, understandably, can't donate money at this time. If this is your situation, you can contact your representatives, local, state, and federal. Seek out their information, especially your mayors and your city council people, especially if you live in or near a city that has had an increased police presence during the protests and demand accountability and change. To contact your state governor, representatives, and congresspeople, there are several tools that I use that really, really help me. They can easily help you identify who your state and federal representatives are and get a message to them, written or over the phone. These tools can provide you with scripts to read and templates to write if you have any kind of anxiety about speaking or knowing where to start. Links to those tools can be found in the show notes. Lastly, and especially for listeners of this show, keep racism and bigotry out of the tabletop gaming community. There are a lot of white voices in the TTRPG space. Let's be aware of this and make an effort to diversify. Support games, creators, and companies who make tabletop games that are inclusive and have a diverse perspective. If you're in a position with hiring power, consider artists, designers, and writers who are people of color or others who lack representation in gaming. Be aware of marginalized voices and include them in your games, at your tables, in your game stores, and in your conversations. There are also other organizations for underrepresented people in gaming that can be donated to if you are able. Please seek them out. 
and speak up and speak out against racism and demand inclusion from the tabletop gaming community, RPG companies and publishers, and from the games that we play. Don't be silent. Silence is violence. Please support this movement for change with your time or with your money if you are able. And please contact your reps to demand change and end violence against our friends, our neighbors, and our citizens. Support each other. Listen. Hope. Rebel. Thank you very much, and please enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Respect the Crit. I'm Ian Duncan, your host and game master, and we are uh, apart but not alone. To my digital left, the woman who thinks she's better than all of us with three names, Jamie Lee Bonez. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's it's funny you say that because today I will be playing L O R N A, the modified medical droid. Ooh, the full name. That's the full, full name. name. That's when your mama call you out. L O R N A. You get down here right now. <laughs> and to my digital right, Alex Herrera. I'm Alex, and I'll be playing Bigax Botano, the Doug Slicer. You guys are going to need every ounce of luck for the situation that you're in and I am so excited to see what you do. Is it possible that destiny could could play a part? Do we get to do that? Let's find out. <laughs> Let's <laughs> What a transition. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that tee up. That was beautiful. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Episode 15, Into the Fire. Returned to the planet Sokoro and safely landed in the walled city of Sejali Sa'i, Elo and Bigax part ways with their new comrades. But before they could enjoy the sights of the secluded city, they were contacted by the Triumvirate, a trio of crime lords who control Sokoro, and extorted into carrying out an assassination on the untouchable Zalto the Hutt. With little choice and fewer options, the fearless fringes agreed, hoping to turn their disadvantage into opportunity. Elo further investigated the strange glitches in their programming, but came away with more questions than answers. Meanwhile, Bigax discovered his stolen slicing system is treacherously traceable when he and Elo were attacked by Imperial Viper droids sweeping the city. The Fringers escaped by speeder across the Badlands, only to be pursued by a powerful predator, the Empire. Let's go ahead and do the destiny roll. Oh yeah, two, two light side. Two light side. <laughs> I got two dark side. Two no, dark Jamie. side. <laughs> no! Balance, I got one dark side. Yeah, and then and then and then what? And then the wills of the force. We have asked them to intervene, to step in, and decide where the balance will tip for this session on our Twitter uh, at Respect the Crit. So the wills of the force have decided to challenge you with a additional dark side point. And just like before, this dark side point, once it is used just evaporates from the game. It does not it does not revert back into a light side point. It is a resource that belongs only to me. And I am definitely going to use it. I it's cannot It's because wait. you have more midichlorians. In <laughs> <laughs> the camera does not pan down. No, 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 no. We are in the thick of it. We are on the red sun of Socorro as it burns bright against the city of Sejali Sa'i and we're on this long stretch of highway that's just slightly elevated from above the sand to keep off the dust as it blows across the badlands on the well we'll just say your left side are the Rhyme Mountains jagged peaks that point up threatening the sky and deep valleys shadowed below and to your right the Badlands, as far as the eye can see. Like, have you ever driven through Central California at all? It's like that flat and nothing mountains to the to one side, and then just like 
dryness and desolation. And coming right at the camera, boom, the speeder bike flying right over it. And, and we like, we like tilt up around it and our whole view dips all the way from the sky and back over back uh, to the other side of the freeway. Now upside down as we see the speeder bike like plowing through this line and then overhead a sort of triangular shaped white shuttle just blasting through the, the red sky, this Lambda class Imperial shuttle, keeping pace with this bike almost as, as if the two were threaded together by string, by fate. And let's roll some initiative. So we're going to, at the top of this, do some piloting checks. We're going to say right now that this Lambda class uh, shuttle is flying at you. And we'll say that it's at short range from you. Um, it isn't right on top of you, but it's definitely like trying to get on top of you. So we'll need, we'll need to do some um, competitive piloting checks and I'm battling a rival pilot yes basically yes we'll call that a purple and a red piloting check three success two threat as you like scream out through on this highway you're able with your head start to be able to keep the distance from you this this ship comes up out of the walled city and is flying along the highway it is above you but like trying to maintain an altitude and uh sort of like swerving around in the air as you like go along this freeway at at the top speed this bike can go at the top we have a pc turn what would you like to do uh, we can't get any further away from it right like this is as far as we can get from it yep yep you're able to maintain yeah. the distance so about short about short range do we have what kind of weapons do we have with us right now i'm pretty sure you have the rifle uh as well i think you traded that out with with verse before you left the disruptor rifle uh, can I hand Elo the disruptor rifle as I'm still driving? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so Bigax is gonna like quickly look over his shoulder and keep driving the bike just like, you know, oh, crap. Ah, and he's gonna look back and he's gonna like, with the, I, I imagine it has like a strap on it and he's gonna like flip it around. He's gonna like take it off and like hand it to Elo behind him and kind of just like shove it in their face and say, ah, shoot for the bottom of it. Aim for the bottom, aim for something vital. And he's just gonna like keep shoving the rifle in their face because <laughs> they're, they're behind me right yeah. they're like riding but they're like sitting behind me yeah he's gonna have sh like just keep like motioning for them to take it like ah does that take up the pc slot your turn i would i would say no i mean okay. no, i would say just, i think you can pass a yeah. rifle back okay. yeah i'm just gonna pass pass the rifle and uh do i have i have a pistol also i think so i think you have i'm carrying i'm carrying way too many guns i get if i get stopped so like I'm going to jail. Y'all strapped. <laughs> <laughs> so we are trying to run and fire on these people. Oh, yeah. Big X is saying basically shoot, aim for the bottom. Because, okay. and allow, let me know if I can do this, Ian. I mean, I worked with the Imperials. I, I wouldn't know every specific detail of the ships. But I would imagine Big X knows that, like, the underside of a Lambda class carrier is pretty exposed there's not a lot of armor on these things because they're meant to like take supplies or like like the ones in row one the big guys they're like the smaller version of this right i'm assuming it's the it's the classic one. yeah yeah these are like the shuttles you see like darth vader taking to the death star and like traveling from from ship down to planet and stuff like that so he's telling you to aim for the underneath <laughs> aim for the under part or you know what you can even aim for the cockpit because that's it's like sticking forward. It's it's jut, it juts forward if I remember. Yeah, and it being above it being above you at this moment, like if you were to turn back, like you can see both the cockpit and the and the underside of it certainly. Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he's gonna tell you shoot ah, shoot up. Okay. So I want to try a thing. So I want to try a thing, and I want you to see if if this is okay. So I want Elo to grab this shotgun. 
uh, look back and sort of assess like distance of like how far back this thing is going to be. And then Ello is going to, wants to tap Bigax on the shoulder and say, hit the brakes. And I want us to stop and have it go over us. And then I want to fire from directly oh, under it. I, I like that. That's very <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay. Then for my, my action, can I hit the brakes? I think that that's <laughs> I think that that's what we should do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what you hit the brakes because this is super like how hard are you hitting these brakes? You tell we're me. We're going Mary. fast. Very hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going real fast. I'm gonna have to like like it's when you hit that brake on the scooter that like doesn't really work like on the back. Because we have the front guns yeah. too. <laughs> oh, we do. Yeah. So he he hits the brake as hard as possible. Okay, give me another piloting check for that the same check as before one purple and one red got it dude two success and one threat i probably blew up the bike or something no (laughs) 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 not with one threat i think uh, well, I, I know what it is. Uh, do you want to describe how you pump the brakes on this? or? Yeah, yeah. So, Red smoke. No, um, so this time he, he doesn't want to do like the power slide. So instead, because this is like a new bike. This is a, it's a I would assume it's a model he's not familiar with, but the, you know, the basics are still there. There's the throttle. There's like a... Throttle thingy. I don't know how the brakes, uh, motorcycles work. So I think it's like that handbrake, right? It's like, the, it's like that, that liver. It's like that little silver... Lever almost. Yeah, right? I think it's something you like squeeze. I, it would be my guess. I don't know. I don't know from 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 motorcycles. So I would imagine this is Star Wars. This is a better a better version of us. It has the squeeze brake on the on one of the one of the handles there, and it also has probably something like on the heels of where you put your feet on the bike. And he's gonna use that extra brake like, ah! and so the bike is gonna begin to like slow down. Right, or at least it's gonna it's gonna get like choked, kind of like, uh, and probably cause some strain on the bike because like this thing going from like high rev to like oh completely shut down. Those poor brake pads. It's, <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever they use, and you just hear like machinery inside the bike, kind of like grind, like, uh, and it like it's still hovering, but it's like, and the underside, the undercarriage has those motors that are like probably pushing out uh, like a reverse reverse pulse or something to like ah stop yeah i love it yeah so this dust kicks out like bigax like slams on the brakes and the the uh speeder bike fishtails and threatens to like go wild but bigax is able to hold on and adjust so that uh it, it so that it it is able come skidding to a stop here in the middle of this freeway the shuttle goes flying over your head and sees that you stop, and uh, we'll, that, that is the PC turn. So now we are to an NPC turn. The shuttle is going to woo, fly over your head, spin around, like do a very quick turn and start coming back forwards now, like heading your way. Still still the, uh, the cockpit and the underside of it, of it exposed, there is first a a shot from the cannons in front of it. <laughs> and they shoot like onto the freeway in front of you, causing like dust and debris to go like flying up into the air. It is very clear that this is not meant to hit you. And you hear coming out from some kind of speakers or something. Stop in the name of the empire. Shut off your vehicle. Put your hands on your head and lay down on the road. This is your only warning. And uh, that'll be their turn. We are at a PC slot. Hello, what would you like to do? <laughs> I love it. James like freaking out. <laughs> she's, she's I wanted to shoot them as they were like, but I get, I get the, that wouldn't have worked. No. Okay. I guess I'll shoot them. Excellent. I, Cause I can't drive anywhere. What else am I going to do? Get off. So with this rifle, Elo aims up at this shuttle, and because of the threat, I'm gonna add a black die to okay. your roll. We're gonna call that uh, one difficulty, a black die, and then I'm gonna use the dark side point that was gifted to me by the wills of the force to bring balance to the universe. 
You raise this rifle up at a vulnerable spot at this shuttle, and suddenly your vision glitches out. (laughs) You are seeing a battle somewhere else. There is blaster fire, and it seems like it's night, and there are green and red streaks of light crossing through your vision, battle droids marching around, and you are seeing this all from the perspective of like laying on the ground, and I want you to fire that (sighs) rifle. Okay, well, here we go. Okay, two successes, one threat. That's not bad. That's like the best It outcome. really is. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the shields. Well, you know. Can you roll for me two additional black die? One threat. All right, so two successes, two threats. So this disruptor rifle does 10 damage. Oh. However... Things that are like enormous like this, it's 10 damage on a personal scale to every one damage on a planetary scale. So one. (laughs) So you fire up into this thing. You see it sort of like blast in. Well, actually, you don't see it. I don't. you see this disruptor blast go up into the shields as this thing hovers in front of you and sort of like crackle in that way that energy does when it hits a shield. That could have gone better. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, ah. And (laughs) hello. Would you like to do anything else? I would just be frozen. On the back of this bike, oh, basically. Boy. Though I keep hearing the uh, meme from TikTok where it's like, run. Great. We are back at the top of the round. It is a PC slot. Now you're stopped. So there's no piloting check to do because if you do nothing, this shuttle descends upon you. What would you like to do, Big X? Or LO. This is a PC slot. It can be to anyone. Well, she's. they are frozen, are they yeah. not? They are in the negative zone or whatever the hell's going on in their brain. <laughs> oh, man, this is a tough... Like, part of me wants to run or wait for them to descend and then run, but I don't know how they would descend. Like, they could scoop us up. There's going to be, like, six dudes in there because there's a lot of Imperials now, from what I understand. A lot of them have been dispatched. There are, as as this shuttle comes forward to you, having fired these warning shots and you blasted on it, coming out of it now deployed are two Viper drones that seem to be, like, drifting down from the shuttle itself. Oh. I feel like we should just run, run and gun. I feel like we should run, but I feel oh. like... The universe really wants us to just let these people capture us. The Empire? I don't like, if I get captured by the Empire, I'm done. Yeah, That's you are you are pretty much done. So we have to. We have no option. We have to run. And BGX is like, ah, well, if you're gonna get me, you're gonna get me in a bag. And then he just yes! <laughs> throw, put, punches it. That is Excellent. such yes. <laughs> I'm going right under him. Self-destructive. So you punch it. Spin that speed back up to two. Suffer one strain per point of speed. Let's do another piloting check. So we'll do one purple, one red to see if you can get away from them, if you can, if you can, uh, create any distance from you from this from this maneuver. Alright. Here we go. Oh, that would have been a triumph. No! <laughs> it rolled off my mouse pad and it <laughs> went from triumph to one of the lesser ones. So I have three success, one threat. Well, that's very good because I have four threats and one success. <laughs> Big axe. Poof. Punches it and goes flying out, flying out from under this thing, 
as it just hovers and leaving the Viper drones, uh, the Viper probe dro- dro- droids, droids uh, you behind. Thank you. Um, and you go blasting down the freeway again. Would you like to do anything else? I want to look at Elo and like try to give them a chance. Like, hey, shoot the droids! And I think when I turn around, I see them kind of just like, well, they normally have a blank stare anyways because they're a droid. But like, it's like more screen savory. I pick like you know, like it's like yeah, it's like a loading symbol or something. That's <laughs> <laughs> beach. He's got the the beach ball, the match. The yeah, match yeah in the in the mouth. And I'm like, oh, Criff. And I'll try and take my weapon back if I can. I don't know. That'd be up to LO. They're probably in like a zombified state. I don't think they would even. Okay. And he'll grab it. B guys will grab the gun. Ah! Like pull it and keep driving. You get a hail on your comm. Someone is trying to talk to you. You hear the voice of Verse. Hello, BGAX. We heard explosions and I don't know, I kind of figured that was you. Are you okay? What's going on? <laughs> Calm <laughs> on. I'm being chased by the Empire. What? Not a good time. Wh- where are you? I'm with LO. We're on our bike. We're heading south from the city. And Imperials are chasing you? And he looks behind them and he sees the, the ship <laughs> is still there. Yes, very much. Carapace, we're coming. We're coming. Just hang on. Uh, well, they got a ship, so you need something bigger than a ship. They got a ship? Yeah. I mean, you could probably look outside wherever you are. You could probably see it. Just hang on. Click. Now we are to a PC or an NPC slot. As you're having this conversation, once again, the shuttle like spins around in the air, having to take its time to maneuver, sort of like wobbling to try and find its balance as it's trying to maneuver around this very fast, very swift bike. And it comes screeching down, down the highway again. It fires again, Um, but this time it fires in front of you and it seems to be like trying to make potholes in the road basically to slow you down. Yeah, like bits of debris and stuff come up off of the off of the highway as you as you are throttling towards it and you hear another voice from the from the ship. This is your last chance. <laughs> they said that last time. <laughs> <laughs> You are also getting a contact on your channel, and it looks like Varlo Jakal is trying to call you. Good, everyone's calling. He says as he's maneuvering over potholes and debris. Hey, Varlo, how's it going? Ah, B, how are you? Is this a good time? Not great, not great. What do you want? Well, I heard that you have had a discussion with some of our associates in Sajali Sayyid. We've taken the liberty of releasing your ship. No need to worry about the uh, the fees any longer. Uh, you should be able to come and go as you please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except for uh, being tailed by a very big uh, imperial ship right now. So unless you have uh, a magic wand or you know you got a Jedi or somebody in there that can help get rid of this thing. The Empire, you said. I did. Uh, yeah, I see a Lambda class shuttle chasing me right now. Hold on. And then he's gonna like. I imagine him maneuvering as like. Some Viper Droid fire or something is coming from behind him, like maybe some more obstacles in the road, and he's just like. Mm. <laughs> I just picture Elo at the back of this bicycle, just like hitting Bigax as we're like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's dun, just like dun, dun, they're just like a floppy robotic doll on the back of this bike. Uh, you hear like some some conf- just some like confusion on the other end, and Varo is like. That is troubling. Well, I hope we talk soon. Yeah, me too. And ends the communication. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, he, then I think Bigax realizes, like, he'll think, like, oh, if they're chasing me, they're probably jamming or tracking my communications or something. Just from being, that was his job. But there's not really anything he can do about it, because this is a bike. This doesn't have no computers on here. It just has, like, oh, <laughs> how much gas you have? Or, like, how fast are you going? So you guys continue to race through here and give me a give me another piloting check to try and like clear these potholes that are being made. We're going to do again the the red and the purple but throw a black die in there for a hazardous terrain. For flavor. Oh, fuck. oh ho, ho, ho. 
I never know. That could be a good laugh or a bad laugh. It's I just know. an excited laugh. So I have a triumph, oh, an advantage, but also a failure. These potholes, like you just like you're trying to clear them and ride through them, but it's just like and like you just hit it hard and take a strain on uh, on oh, the bike. Oh, the bike is gonna blow up. The repulsors on it cause like because there's a shift in altitude, like a sudden shift in altitude, you kind of go like launching out, but you're able to keep control. Now, what is that triumph gonna do for you here? Cause that's very good and probably pretty timely. I would hope or maybe that there are other vehicles on this road, right? You seem to be the only ones right now. The only other vehicle is this shuttle <laughs> coming oh, at you. No. What if you saw Verse and Creed in the distance? <laughs> uh, can I can I use the triumph to see backup coming? Is that <laughs> is that plausible? Yes, I think so. I'm gonna add a little something to it though. It's not coming from the direction that you came from. There is a, another vehicle coming from the direction you are going, that you are headed. Oh. And you see it suddenly like, maybe like coming out from a from a part of the mountain or something, like a, like a large rock outcropping or something. It like pulls out from that as if concealed from it and then like revs itself up onto the road and aligns itself with you. It's this like large speeder uh, with a, it's like big and rectangular with a big trunk on it, basically. Does it have any markings on it that I can distinguish? No markings that are distinguishable, but I guess the most important thing is it does not have any Imperial markings. That's what I was wondering. So it doesn't have any, it doesn't have the symbol of oppression. It, That's exactly, okay. yeah. <laughs> and it, it almost seems like I think this triumph allows you to like figure out that like this is a this is something that was waiting there. It, it just kind of comes out of nowhere and shows up. Like it's not some civilian just riding this road. Like there's something something about this that that is advantageous or could be used in an advantageous way. Yeah, I guess I'll just keep going forward because it's like lining itself up with me, right? With the with the bike. Sure. Yeah. So I'll just keep on keep the course, stay on the course. Am I still visually on the ground in this red and green sphered place? Let's say that the glitch like glitches back, and you are suddenly back in present in this moment. All right, so I think Ello first realizing that they're back on this bike with Bigax and maybe even looking down at their hands, seeing that the rifle is gone, sort of like, oh, I went straight from that place to this place to that place. You know, like it was very sudden um, in their experience and is going to look around, see this other speeder next to them, see that they're still being chased and it's in front of you. It's up a ways in front of you. It's the, in front the of other us. Yeah. Okay. I guess Elo, uh, after sort of getting their bearings, is going to tap Bigax on the s shoulder and say, "Give me that." Are you not gonna freak out again? And he's still like kind of. He can't look behind him. He's still driving. They will not respond and just grab it out of one of his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it would just be it would be in his right hand because he's or yeah, he'd have a lot of hands. Yeah, one of his one of his right hands has it as he's still kind of so he wouldn't even resist. You just snatch it All from right. him and then uh, try to fire, I guess, again on the imperial ship. Go ahead and and roll me another another check again. Just one one purple now. Oh. I just got one threat. So what does that look like? The you you firing on on the ship? Maybe it has something to do with Elo still getting their bearings back, um, grabbing this weapon and sort of quickly feeling the need to prove themselves. Maybe not aiming very correctly. Uh, I think Elo probably just goes wide and like over the shoulder of this ship. Like the ship would see it fly right past them. 
You fire, it goes wide, the ship maneuvers out of the way, yeah. And out of frustration, Ella will go, Criff, can you drive straight, please? Yeah, sure. Let me let me offer you an uh, in-flight beverage or something, too. And he just, like, keeps revving it up and, like, looking back. <laughs> We are back at the top of the round. Again, I'm going to need another piloting check. Um, so you're still going top speed, yeah? So it's still that same red, one red, one purple uh, to see if you can get any distance away. And you had before, so let's say you're uh, you're at short range now. Five successes. <laughs> <Son of a laughs> bitch. <laughs> Three success, two Threats. Two threats. Okay, so this ship is able to like close the distance, at maneuvering away from this thing, and now it is just on top of you. It is like uh. it's like it's like a helicopter, just like just like hovering above you, and you can see some of the like uh, some of the apertures of it opening up. It's close enough where you can see like stormtroopers like leveling rifles and blasters and like looking down at you like it is right on top of this bike. What would you like to do? Well, okay, when the bike gets a zero strain, what happens? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to find out. I don't want to find out. No, well, no. ostensibly, it would be overworked and 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 stop functioning. You shut down? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I figured. Okay, well, uh, describe this highway to me. What does it look like? So the highway is probably about, it's probably about four lanes uh, wide. There's no real, like, median I I I at all. It does every once in a while have these archways, just like very thin archways that go over it. <laughs> that they they aren't um thick and they're not like tunnels or bridges but uh they just like arch over the the highway it is elevated up a little bit Terrific. yeah okay. uh sand yeah. on like to keep the sand off basically and then yeah up ahead the city of vakea behind you the city you just left mountains uh, to the left of me, Badlands to the right, and here we are, stuck in the middle with a Lambda class <laughs> shuttle, <laughs> and then, uh, and then of course this like speeder truck up ahead of you that you are slowly gaining, gaining distance. What on. range? What range is the truck in? Long range, I assume, from where we're at. Um, I think it's closer than that now. It's like medium range from you. And if I stay where I am, the they will probably shoot at us next turn or do something to get us. I assume, because they're so close. They're, like, right above us. Okay, I'm going to do, I think, evasive maneuvers is one of the piloting things I can do. I don't have my book Yes, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. Evasive yeah. maneuvers. Yeah, you basically upgrade any attacks made on on your bike or whatever. You're you're sort of, like, ducking and weaving, my guess is, right? Like, serpentine? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, like, basically, Big X is trying to move the bike like swerve a little to get so they don't have a clear shot or a clear vantage point because it sounds like they have some sort of opening and they're all aiming down from where they're at and he's gonna yell he's gonna yell to Ello, shoot him inside the ship and he's just gonna like point up it also makes any attacks you're making more difficult as well yep. yeah I, yeah I sh I, they told me to be steady but i cannot because <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna shoot at us too it is an npc Turn. Pew pew time. It's pew pew time. They are going to try and shoot down on on you. A couple of blue rings coming down from the ship. So failure and two advantage oh, is great. how that song goes. Yeah, so the weaving works. Hello, it makes it difficult for you to be able to like get a shot on any of these troopers or on the ship itself but you are narrowly dodging these like rings of blue stun as Bigax like swerves around and the truck in front of you continues to get closer and closer but it maintains its steady course going straight down the highway the shuttle on top of you now what would you like to do I'm gonna shoot up I 
love it. Is there anything that Ello can see from this vantage point of looking up at this shuttle that they could aim for that might be like, oh, that's a great idea. That right there, if I hit that, oh boy. I'll say if you flip a light side point, there definitely is. All right, there is. It's right there. I, it's in full view, and you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to hit it. There's like a, yeah. There's like a red barrel <laughs> inside, <laughs> inside there that Lo can see. We like see their targeted vision, like <laughs> difficulty. Let's call it. Oh, I am gonna give you one black die for the advantages that they have. And you all actually, you do have one more purple die because of the evasive maneuvers. So oh. two purple, one black. Two purple, one black. Three successes, two threats. Nice, Ooh. nicely Ooh. done. All right. Oh, I'm Excellent. so happy. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> so I picture Ello is grabbing this shotgun and is while we're weaving back and forth, trying to avoid these blue beams um, is sort of, like you said, taking their aim. You see that sort of target from their perspective and they see this switchboard, recognizing it from some other ship that Elo had been on and realizes that's what I need to hit. And as they're swerving back and forth, Elo takes her sights, zooms in, and maybe all these stormtroopers look up at each other and like, huh? There's an explosion. There's an explosion inside of the ship. Uh, you can see like it sort of engulf a bunch of these stormtroopers and their armor. The uh, the ship like does like one of those like wild like tipping maneuvers, uh, but it it like rights itself and continues. We do like a, a camera pan, like we're following a pod race and you just see like black smoke pouring out along the freeway on this as Big X and Elo go screaming down the freeway. It is literally, they were on top of us, so it's like raining fire upon us. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, in fact, oh, that's good for those threats. Yeah, we should do like, there's, there's a little bit of like singeing ash and burning stuff. And uh, and I think Elo, uh, you maybe take a strain trying to as as this gets like jerked around as Bigax like avoids all of this stuff. Good use of a light side point, though. Now Good use of a light side. <laughs> You've point. only got one. You got rid of it. That's the most important thing. So we're back up to the top of the round. What happens is this truck pulls up very close. It's it's very close range with you this whole time. It's It's been sort of like reducing its speed to sort of like get in front of this speeder bike, not to block it, but just to like uh, get close to it. And suddenly the like door of the truck like, like lifts up from it and you see a bunch of people they all are on one knee and they have these enormous tubes that they bring up to their shoulders and it seems for a moment that they're pointing these tubes at the bike at Bigax and LO but they tip it up and from each tube boom, 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 missiles come firing out from the tops of them and careen into this shuttle. It explodes around the, the shields and the vulnerability and into the cockpit here, and suddenly there is a fireball that is on top of you now, like crashing uh, and it was spinning wildly, no longer in control. The chunks of fire and hot metal and ash continue to rain down on Ello and Bigax as this thing just collides into the ground. And you can see one of the people in this in this truck standing up is like a very tall, gaunt, gray looking humanoid, um, an Upawan. They 
brake check you very hard. You avoid hitting this thing directly, but it causes you to, to stop. The truck itself stops as well. And these beings come out. They are varied, and a lot of them are like wearing, it looks like, an amalgamation of different types of armor, some of it imperial armor but bits and pieces of it, like not so much a uniform as it has been scavenged. I think there's like one human, but there's like a bunch of aliens. Can we have one of those blue ladies with the things? They're so pretty. Yeah, there's definitely a Twi'lek, yeah. This one looks mean though. That's oh, fine. like the one from the Mandalorian. They've got like a big scar across their face or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And blue for sure, yeah, she's blue for sure. She's got that like pilot helmet on that that encapsulates her, they're called Leku. Tendrils? Yes, but tendrils, yeah. There's definitely like a little person, like Warwick Davis is here. Yeah. Uh, and just as like, just as a person, but it's just a little, a little person human, yeah. There's definitely the like two tubes guy with the like crazy silver eyes from Rogue One in there. I forget oh, what the species yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, Like the little screamy guy from Rogue One. Yeah, a screamy one. We can have a screamy one from, from Rogue One. And then standing in front of them is this Upawan who is gray, tall, like probably about six feet, two meters, gray skin, uh, sort of gaunt f- features, and yellow eyes pulling a blaster. You are Big X Botano, correct? <laughs> The bike is, like, turned, right? And uh, it's still on. I'm looking at him. Ah, uh, depends who wants to know. And my hand... One of my hands are reaching for my light blaster, because Elo has my, uh, my disruptor rifle. <laughs> About ten blasters aim at you all at once, and this Upawan steps out. They are staring down at you, and he nods to one of his associates... They come up around behind you. Firstly, they take the rifle out of Elo's hands. They look for other weapons on your person and do a search. I think they find the blaster on Begax. And Elo, I don't remember, but I think your blaster has some kind of stealth component. Like, it's a holdout blaster, if I remember. It makes it more difficult. It definitely is a holdout blaster. What's your what's your stealth? Three greens. No, they do they are not able to find your holdout Ooh. blaster. Nice. <laughs> so they are not able to find that. They do take your medical bag and pull it off of you. They find they also they find your comms on you <gasps> and throw them on the ground and the Supawan just like <laughs> like steps on it, crushes it. No! His boot. Also, this speeder bike, they just, like, like, fire a bunch of blaster in it. Like, set the repulsor to, like, go, let it go, like, spinning off into the desert and just, like, blow it up. It explodes. (laughs) What the fuck? That's a rental. You're coming with us. Ah, he looks back to Elo. Puts his hands up. (laughs) I guess I don't have much of a choice, huh? (laughs) And then they take hoods and... Throw it over your heads. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Respect the Crit, Empire's Edge. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us by giving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It's a simple thing that will really help us grow the show, and we love to read your feedback. For more information about the show, visit at Respect the Crit on Twitter and Instagram. Bgax is played by Alex Herrera, who you can find on Twitter at A.E. Herrera or on his Twitch channel, WadeWolf10. Elo is played by Jamie Lee Bonez, who you can find on Instagram at jamielee.bones. I'm Ian Duncan, your GM and MC, and you can find me at idunks on Twitter and Instagram. The original music featured in the show is provided with permissions by a variety of artists and are linked in the show notes. Please support them by visiting their platforms to check out more of their work and tell them how much you like the show. The Star Wars role-playing system and books are published by Fantasy Flight Games. And remember, whatever the system, whether it's a miss or a hit, you always gotta respect the crit. Thank you very much, and may the Force be with you. And you hear um, 
from from the shittle from the shittle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shittle. <laughs>